So time to build a cauldron of blood. Um, I really don't like the one that's, well I was about to say that is available from GW, it's actually available direct only. So that's, it's sort of available, but you can't go into a store and buy it. Uh, but anyway, um, th that cauldron looks pretty good, I just don't like the giant uh, statue that goes with it. Uh, I do have the old cauldron from uh, back when the Cauldron of Blood had wheels, uh, but this is way too small. So uh, I decided to build my own and build one where the emphasis was on the cauldron, uh, not on a chariot or a, a big statue above it. So first thing I needed were legs for the cauldron, I decided, and I got this. Now I was searching on eBay something, some sort of small cup or something like that, and you know, you search for one thing, that leads you to another and to another. I ended up searching for egg cups, which uh, gave me some really good ideas. And then I found egg stands. Uh, apparently there's people who collect eggs, either decorated eggs that are painted or um, various uh, stones that have been carved and polished that are in egg shape. And you can get all these various sorts of stands for them. There's um, you know, several dozen different ones, if not hundreds, available on eBay. And pretty cheap. This was like six bucks. So this is the stand for my cauldron. And now for the cauldron itself, I looked around quite a bit at various parts, but uh, I got an egg stand, so let's use an egg. This is a plastic egg. Um, if, if we were still around Easter time, it would have been a lot easier finding this. It took me quite a while to find something uh, that was decent. Uh, this is actually a dinosaur egg. You get a little dinosaur in it, and inside is this disgusting goop as well, which is kind of like silly putty actually. I may keep this. But anyway, it's very stinky, and I gotta wash my hands. Anyway, so here we have the stand, here we have the cauldron. <clears throat> uh, I do need to trim this down a bit because it is too high right now. Hopefully I can just trim this uh, lip off without uh, cracking it. Because I'm going to have a big cauldron here. But uh, right now it's a bit too big, I think. Hopefully I don't have to go any lower because this is very brittle stuff. That's why I bought two, just in case one breaks. But, uh... Yeah, I'm going to start by cutting this off, and then we'll go lower if needed. Because I kind of want a shallow cauldron, I don't want a really tall one. Alright, so that's the first step, is cutting this in half. Oh, oh! Forgot this. Um, I didn't know exactly what size cauldron I wanted at first, so I bought this as well. This was a, uh, a ball that I just cut in half. Uh, it's definitely going to be way too big. I thought about filling it up with plaster and then using the plaster as the cauldron. Uh, may still do that. I don't know. But also I bought it because I thought it would be really funny to have a happy face on the bottom of my uh, cauldron of blood. Okay, here's the uh, cut down cauldron. I um, cut the edge. Here, let me get the other one. Well, this is the top half. Um, I cut the edge off of the bottom, and then I felt it was still a bit too high, so I cut down a bit more. And to get an even um, cut, uh, I took a 50 millimeter War Machine round lip base, and I set the egg into the bottom of it, and used that as a guide so I got an even cut going all the way around. And then to add a lip to it, I took that same base. I cut the inside out and then uh, upside down glued it onto the top of the egg. So now I got a nice lip here. And you can see all the glue here, no problem because that's all going to be painted up eventually. So looking pretty good right now. The next step is to, I'm going to fill in this lip a bit so it's more angled down. And then I need to add a little bit of bracing around it. I'm going to do that with just styrene. And so add a brace around here and maybe down the sides as well. I don't know exactly what yet. 
So here we are. Got the putty in place uh, to smooth out that center uh, or that side edge in the, the inside of the cauldron. And I put two strips of styrene around the bottom here. I did a uh, rectangle strip and then uh, after some contemplation I uh, put a this is a quarter round piece that I put on top of it and uh, this is where it joins it's pretty nasty right now I gotta fill that with putty and sand it down but uh, that's about it I may do a tiny uh, bit more decoration around the outside I know it's looking a bit plain right now um, I would put bracing going down the bottom I still may do that I'm not 100% sure yet but my plan is to uh, paint a diorama basically paint a whole uh, what do you call it a relief all around the cauldron so there's gonna be a painted scene of some sort going all the way around which is quite daunting because uh, painting flat surfaces that's I mean that's really hard that's a lot harder than painting miniatures and I'm not good at it and I haven't tried to do it in years and years and years so not sure how it's going to turn out and I'm not sure exactly uh, I'm not sure exactly what I'm painting yet I got a few ideas floating around in my head most of them uh, are kind of complex so I think I gotta simplify it a bit well, we shall we shall see about that. So, um, gotta let this dry. Uh, thinking about some bit more decoration here. We'll uh, see in the next video if I do that or not. And then once that's done, I can start with the inside of the cauldron. Got something a little special in mind for that. Just about done with the decorating stage. Um, all the bits on here I managed to collect off of uh, all my old uh, Dark Elf Warrior sprues. So that's pretty neat. All the bits for the Dark Elf Cauldron Blood are from the Dark Elf sprue. Have the uh, skulls, which are little doodads that hang from the banners. They normally have chains on them. I just cut the back of the head off and then used a round file to form it to this round styrene that I have here. Underneath, the skull I added a little bit to the this isn't the quiver I'm not sure what this is but it's part of the crossbow I guess the main body of the crossbow uh, I just cut off the uh, pointed rear section of it and then here is uh, on each sprue you get a spare crossbow for the warriors so I just cut off the shaft and bent this to form uh, the shape of the cauldron so that's definitely enough decoration. I don't want to go too far. I'm already losing space for my uh, mural if I decide to paint that. I will add a few little doodads to the bottom coming off from the stand. However, I don't want to attach the stand until the last minute because this is fairly heavy and uh, gluing it to the plastic here is going to be a little hard. I know it's going to break off at some point. so. I'm going to try to leave this to the last minute. So that's it for the decoration for now. This is still not quite dry here. This has all been one night I've been working on this thing. So um, once this dries a bit more, just a light sanding to make sure it's smooth, then I could get working on the, the inside. So the putty's nearly dry and I've added a little wooden circle inside the cauldron. Uh, the reason for that is uh, I'm going to be adding contour putty on the top to uh, recreate the blood and uh, I don't want to have to fill this entire thing up with contour putty because it's just a waste and uh, I could have put a base in here or something but I had this little wooden circle and it fit perfectly so that's the reason that's in there. Uh, now so on top of this is going to go uh, contra putty kind of sculpted with bubbles and little whatnot in there so it's kind of looking like this one uh, but here's the special thing I'm adding a few other things I'm making this more of a demonic cauldron than just a cauldron of blood while I was looking around for parts 
uh, I don't think it was, I can't remember if it was for this project or one of the other ones, but I found this uh, Reaper, some sort of like Dryad figure, and I realized it would be perfect for my Cauldron of Blood. So I'm going to hack it off right around there somewhere, and she's going to go in the middle, and surrounding her are going to be all these little tentacles coming out of the blood. And I, these are from like a really old uh, Warhammer uh, Chaos Spawn figure. So she's going to be in the middle. Uh, this wood branch she's kind of enveloped with. I'm going to use some putty to uh, smooth this out so it looks more like a tentacle and less like a branch. And then I'm going to have all the tentacles coming out here. Not all these probably, just two or three. Don't want to overdo it. So that is the plan. Just gotta hack her off and uh, add her other arm. And I gotta s scrape off some of the uh, flowers. But uh, where does this go? I go in there? Yeah, it goes like right there. I think I'll put that one down so you can't see that sword actually. So that's it. Cauldron of Blood with uh, naked chicks and tentacles. It's my Japanese Cauldron of Blood. So I'm just about ready to mount the figures. Uh, before that, um, I had to make a level surface uh, for uh, to represent the blood. And uh, what I used was just some ordinary plaster of Paris and mixed that up and then I poured it inside. Um, because the wooden disc I put in there was not uh, level. Um, so just by pouring the plaster of Paris in, it gives uh, just gravity alone will help level out the surface and uh, get it all nice and smooth. Uh, did screw up though, as I did just mention, um, I poured it over the wood circle. Uh, so the plaster of Paris immediately started to uh, warp the wooden circle. And uh, so as it dried, it started pulling away and making a big mess. Um, luckily, I managed to scrape it out. And thankfully, the warping wood does not, did not seem to change the shape of the cauldron as it was forming a U. So rather surprised it uh, warped that fast, but uh, good thing it did. So I dug that out, uh, cleaned it up, let it dry overnight. Uh, and then I coated the wood circle with some uh, wood sealant and then just to be uh, extra safe I put a layer of aluminum foil down before pouring the plaster of Paris a second time. So I am seeing a bit of pulling on the side here. It's not 100% dry yet, hopefully that doesn't go anymore. There still will be a thin layer of epoxy putty over this, but um, you know, this is done so I don't have to make you know, a half an inch of epoxy putty and uh, this will give me a, a level surface to work off of. And uh, other than that, did a bit more detailing here on the cauldron. These are the other half of the crossbow that's uh, underneath the skull here. So this is like the back of that crossbow piece and this is the front. And also I did pin the base into the cauldron. Um, wasn't too sure if I could pin this stuff. Uh, this base is like pewter with a high tin content. It's very uh, fragile. At, when I first got it I was wondering if I could bend the legs a bit to a new position and like and broke one off right away. But I uh, did clean that up and I did reinforce them with some epoxy putty and then pins on top of that and I got a massive layer of glue holding it down which I'm probably going to put some epoxy around that as well. So it's, but it's pretty solid right now. So uh, next step, uh, mount the figures. On to the base uh, for the cauldron. Now I didn't have any square bases that were big enough and I had some round ones that were big enough but I didn't want to use them. Uh, when you have a round shape, you know, you don't necessarily want to surround that again with a round shape because it doesn't appear too visually appealing. So uh, by having a square base with the round cauldron, it's 
you know, a bit more interesting to look at, I believe. So since I didn't have any, uh, I decided to make a giant square base. Uh, this is made out of Rackham bases of various sizes, three uh, cavalry bases and one small one. So this ends up being a, uh, what is this now, 75? Yeah, a 75 by 75 uh, millimeter square base. And uh, it's the main support is some metal, uh, sheet metal. And this will allow me to put it, uh, this into my magnetic carrying case. It's looking a bit nasty right now because I glued it all up and I started a wood putty it together and I realized I had one of the bases was off center a bit. So I just had to break it all apart and redo it. So once the glue dries, I'll go back and do this again and clean it up. I'm using wood putty for the large gaps all along here and then on the edges uh, I'll use contour, excuse me, epoxy putty uh, to clean it up so I can get a nice very smooth solid edge along the sides. I could have used a wood base um, but A, um, well I didn't have any around and I didn't want to go through the effort of cutting them. Uh, B, I like the nice beveled edge that is uh, you know standard on most bases and it'll match the rest of the army. And uh, C, as we just learned from the cauldron, wood does warp and it does warp over time so I uh, don't have to worry about that with the plastic. Okay, dry and a bit of putty here. Okay, figures are attached looking pretty good I think. Uh, next stage from here is um, covering the plaster with a thin layer of epoxy putty and then trying to uh, work in like little water disturbances, rings, you know water rings in the in the water, what you want to call it, ripples I guess. Uh, hopefully I can do that. Uh, I suck at sculpting but uh, well, I'm gonna have to give it a shot and see if it works. I, I'm just thinking about maybe adding another thin layer of plaster on top of this just to bury her a bit more. Um, hmm. I don't know. I'll have to think about that. And uh, also got a finish the base here. Putty is still drying and I'm sitting here waiting for it to dry. Staring at it doesn't seem to speed it up at all. Maybe I have to stare longer. Okay, it's done. Uh, inside the cauldron is completed. Uh, rather than doing like ripples in the water, I went with bubbles. Uh, it looks better and it was a lot easier to put in. So uh, I just put, uh, or I used a pencil mainly to add a bunch of bubbles and then I also used the head of a pin for some different sized ones. And uh, these big bubbles forming here, those are large push pins. And then I also reversed them and did a couple big uh, holes where bubbles just popped. So that's looking pretty good. It's nice and uh, frothy and all done. Uh, one thing I did notice is my egg has cracked in a couple places actually quite a few places right there and it's probably going to continue to crack um, all the pressure from just the glue and the uh, oh there you can see one right on camera right there really good all the pressure from the glue and the plaster all the contracting and expanding um, finally cracked the egg uh, however it's not a big deal it's not there's so much holding this together right now, I'm not worried that it's going to fall apart. So, uh, no biggie. And uh, once the, it all settles, I mean, these cracks are going to be all covered by paint eventually. So, that's no big deal. And the base is completed. It's looking a bit nasty right now because it didn't work out as I initially planned. I was going to do um, very flat flagstones that were kind of overgrown with grass but it just it wasn't looking right uh, the square flagstones on the square base I wasn't liking um, I ended up after a couple tries using a 
epoxy putty and this mold that I made years ago. This is a mold made from uh, some rocky terrain texture. I may have shown you this before, or I think I may have shown you the smaller version of it. But uh, I just covered the base with epoxy and pressed it in, and then I made uh, some extra little rocks around the sides to kind of blend it in. Uh, this isn't done yet. This is still very wet, so I can't put the cauldron on to show you the completed piece. But uh, this is going to get detailed up a bit more once this dries. I'll uh, work in some ground gravel texture and work this up a bit so it's not a, a flat edge dropping off. I think I'm going to add some skulls and little bits to it as well. Remnants of uh, previous victims of the cauldron. But uh, there we go. So all done. About two and a half uh, evenings of work. Not too bad. Overall cost, um, a lot of these parts I had lying around, so uh, that was a big bonus. I mean, the in total, what I had to buy the egg stand was like six or seven dollars. The plastic egg was a dollar. Um, was that it? <laughs> I think that was it. Uh, all the other pieces I had around, dark elf bits I had lying around, styrene I got tons of that base. Figure I already had in my bits box that was probably four dollars initially, and old uh, chaos spawn bits again I had lying around, so it came out pretty good. The only thing left is the simple part, the painting. Uh, let's see when that happens. <laughs>